and things going on. Today my sermon is entitled, Don't Break the Line. And our text today will be from Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. It's not a normal time right now. I'm going to open up in prayer. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your words will not fall to the ground. God, that you would encourage, help people. I bind the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Pray, God, that, that through this message, God, that people would be encouraged in Jesus' name. There's a story in the book I'm reading with my husband called A Father's Promise. This story is about a trumpeter's son. This trumpeter was in Poland. And it was his job as a teenager, he, he was so excited to do it, to blow the trumpet once an hour in Poland. Well, back in 1241, the Tartars invaded their land. And so they came through, and it was very scary because they were going to kill off women, children, everyone. The teenager, he had a choice, and I'll just tell you the story. He could leave his position because he was scared. And he was thinking about it. And he was on top of that bell tower in the in top of the church. And the hourglass was falling down. And he made a decision. I'm going to trumpet when that hourglass goes down, no matter what happens to me, so I can help the people. That young man, he trumpeted with all his heart. And the sound rang out, everybody heard it. <laughs> the arrow. They shot it, it pierced his heart. He died. But he died a hero. He died encouraging others. You see, our life is valuable in the eyes of God. Our lives is more important, the quality, than the quantity. Can I encourage you that God is still in control and that we're in a spiritual warfare? I'm going to read to you Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the day of evil, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplications for the saints. Put on the whole armor of God. Don't break the line. Your stand in the battle affects others. Stand your ground. Roman soldiers wore shoes that had like spikes in it. So when they were in battle, they stood their ground that they would not be moved. They were immovable. Because what the enemy would do is scare them and try to get them out of line. So they break the line. Don't you break the line. Even when we are afraid right now. Because we can pray and stand with God and stand with each other in a time like this. Don't break the line. Roman soldiers would soak their, their shields with water and they'd have leather on it. Those things would bounce off and the enemy, when he would light an arrow, he would hit it at the shield and he knew so much he might not kill him, but he would scare him and he could get him from, to break the line. We are having arrows coming at us, arrows of fear, arrows of a virus. Will we make it? I'll tell you what, God only knows when Teresa lives or she dies. The most important thing that I need to do is to stand my ground and serve God no matter what. God is still in control and he still loves you. 
be like that trumpeter. Even though he died young, he's still called a hero today. Death has been defeated by Jesus. He said, surely I'm with you always into the end of the age. Put on the whole armor of God. How do we do that, church, in a time of panic? You need to spend intimate time with God. Put on the helmet of salvation. You're saved. The shield of faith. Yeah, I'm scared, God. Admit you're scared. Admit you have fear. But don't let it control you. Stand your ground. Don't break the line. We need you. You need us. We need each other. And we need God. And say, God, I'm scared, but I will not allow this to get me. I may feel shaken, but I will stand my ground because the armor is on. And we wrestle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. All of hell is unleashed. But remember that God is in control. All the things, all the things we cleave to and depended on, even products at the store is taken away. But God is still here. His word is still here. You can still worship. You can still read the word. And you can still call other Christians and pray. Church is not close. Let me tell you something. The church of Jesus Christ is never held captive. Buildings are closed. Because we're using wisdom to safeguard people. And we're using wisdom to try to fight and defeat this virus with Jesus' help. And in his name. Ephesians 6 talks about God's faithfulness. There's faithfulness he has for us. Other soldiers are watching you. Put on the armor, stand, and just be faithful. Even if your knees are knocking. People are watching you. Generals. Generals don't just stand ground. Generals will help you to advance ground and take ground back from the enemy. Because right now we're surviving, church, but it is God's will that we thrive. When this storm passes, ones that love God will be standing. Some may be in heaven. That's all right. It's sad, and I'm praying for our healing. I'm praying for our health. But the most important thing is this. Do you know Jesus? Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? Look, Jesus died on the cross. He's the only way to heaven. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And if you're washing his blood, if you say, Jesus, please forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. He will. Since today's the day of salvation, we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Make it right. If you don't know Jesus, if you're not sure, ask him in your heart again. Make that sure. And if you do know Jesus, then put on the armor of God because he said, I am with you. I will never leave you. And that Paul wrote, God is giving us armor and spiritual weapons that we can use. When soldiers get sick, there's a superhero soldier called a medic. And the medics run and put their own life in danger to go and help the sick. There's medics in your life, encouragers. They're saying, don't, don't break the line. Keep the ground from the enemy. You can make it. If somebody falls, I'm here to help. Who are the medics in your life? Or as uh, Mr. Rogers used to say, the helpers. They are unsung heroes. We have heroes of nurses and doctors and people putting themselves at risk to make others healthy. Who are our heroes now? Not the ones that we think were so glamorous and so rich, it's the ones that risking their lives for others. Can I ask you something? What happens when a soldier goes AWOL? First of all, they end up getting into military trouble. But when they go AWOL, when they break the line, they affect the whole people. There was a battle for England to get the island. And one of the guys said to the other guy, don't break the line. If you break the line here, we'll lose England. Don't break the line, America. Stay in prayer. Don't give up no matter how hard it is. Because the truth is, I don't know the outcome. I don't know if I personally am going to get the virus. I'm praying I don't. But if I do, God is still God. He will still be good. And I, I will still praise my Lord. But I heard a man of God say, pray for protection. So Pastor John and I are praying that the church has an extra protection from God. 
that we'll use our common sense and wash our hands and do the things they're asking us to do. But we got to trust God, number one, because men can let us down. The world can let us down. The enemy's constantly battling us. But God, he's still in control. And others see you break the line, they may leave as well. And that is why the enemy's trying to terrify you right now. To get you to stop on God. Stop your faith. Stop your prayers. Get you so terrified. All you do is watch the news 24-7 about what's going on with the coronavirus and forgetting that Jesus is in control. He's in control. You may feel wounded and scared and frightened right now. But I have a healer. I have a healer named Jesus. He heals the broken heart and he binds up the wounds. This is a time, church. It's a time to stand. There's one day coming, and it's the ultimate battle when we will see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords defeat that enemy once and for all. You see, he is the risen victorious king. And he will defeat the enemy. We as the church of Jesus Christ need to shine in this dark hour. Ephesians says it. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood right now. It's more than a virus. It's a pandemic of fear. When's the last time you felt fear this strong? I didn't give you a spirit of fear, God says, but a power of love and a sound mind. Put on the whole armor of God and having done all, stand. It's not a long sermon today because I didn't need it to be. Well, what's going on? We need to be honest with each other. I was terrified. I was scared until I spent time with Jesus. And I had a conversation with God because I've been reading the book of Job. And I saw what Job went through and that, yes, God allowed him to go through that. And a very intimate conversation with the Holy Spirit I'd like to share with you. And I said, and I felt the Lord say to me, Teresa, Mm. Thank you. What happened after Job suffered? I said, Lord, he came out as gold. He knew you more. You blessed him more than what he ever had. But he did suffer. Jesus suffered in Gethsemane. We suffer. We suffer. We live in a fallen world world that has viruses and diseases and things that are terrifying. But he said, fear not, I'm with you. Cheer up, I've overcome the world. I denied it of its power to truly harm you. You see, when you know that you're right with God, you know that you're born again, there's a confidence and a peace in the midst of the storm. And Jesus is with you. And when Jesus is ready, he will say, peace, be still. Don't break the line. Pray. Admit to God that you're scared if you are. Admit to others, I really need encouragement. This is a really hard time. Let us know as a church, if you're out of food supplies, hygiene products, medications, we will do our best to try to help. We're a church family, and we want to be there for one another. If I don't know who you are and you need help, I will do my best to try to connect you with resources that can help you. But the first connection I want to do right now is I want to think about what I said. There was a boy that kept his post that trumpeted on the hour when the enemy came in, and he died. He had a shot in the heart, but he's remembered as a hero 
because he didn't break the line. Paul discussed the honor of a God. Having done all, having done all, stand. Standing is don't break the line. Stand in faith. Stand in the power of God right now. God's with you. It's our greatest time to shine, church. He will give us the strength. We will make it. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. You did not give us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. I lift up my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I pray, God, for each household. I ask for your divine protection, your divine healing, that by your stripes we will be healed. I ask God for strength to continue to fight the battle, to sound our trumpet in prayer and worship and Bible reading and encouraging one another and helping where we can and using our wisdom, God. I pray in the name of Jesus such ferocity of spirit that we will not break the line, God, but we have done all will stand because we are the children, the sons and daughters of the Most High God, and in the end, we win. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. I love you all very much. Thank you.